uh, the course has, the program has a complicated historical background and contested identity. It has enormous social significance because it has the highest number of enrollments among all higher education uh, programs in the country. It has a remarkable gender aspect which affects its formative experience and professional identity and accounts for its devaluation in the labor market. Um, it presents pedagogical challenges to academic engagement and development of professional competences as its students present significant gaps in schooling, which is a general problem. And the current challenge is to engage in a heated curriculum reform that's coming. So I'll talk a little bit about each uh, of these points. Uh, the lack of empirical investigations um, about the work for all the functions of the graduates. There are very few uh, research about that, mostly uh, from the Southeast region. And what they basically say is that the pedagogues, the, the graduates, they are mostly in the school system, but they are also a little bit in, in health, in hospitals, in NGOs, in business, in religious education, in churches, in private tutoring, which is a, a theme I have researched and I, I really um, like to, to address this issue. But pedagogy has also a contested identity, teachers versus specialists or educationists which reflects uh, the historical debate over the definition of its complex knowledge basis and scientific status. Um, I'll tell a little bit more about this historical background later. About the enrollments, uh, um, it, it is the first among all uh, undergraduate programs and of course among all the TE disciplinary programs in Brazil and in my state. It then uh, INEC has official statistics saying that pedagogy, it went from 564,000 enrollments in 2009 to 815,000 in 2019 due to the growth of private higher education institutions and distance education under the logic that's the critique of commodification of diplomas and, and at the expense of quality preparation. In 2020, it, it reached 816 enrollments, ranking first among the 15 undergraduate programs with the highest, highest enrollment numbers, which makes for 43, 49% of all higher education enrollments in the country. And it, it had 136,000, 10% uh, of conclusions, plus uh, 338,000 new enrollments, annual entrances. In Paraíba, it's the second uh, programming number of enrollments because law has really uh, grew. Also, it's becoming a distance education also program. It's all part of a deterioration of the higher education system. Yeah. The deterioration of the order of the system. Yes. I don't know. People are having, are having access to, to a higher education, even if it is in those distance education programs. Policy. Policy. No, quality, we, we, we doubt. You know, but yeah, <laughs> it's a feminized program which means gender affects its formative experience and professional identity in my university uh, during the 2006, which is the year of the last curriculum reform until 2021, we had 4,814 new enrollments, among which 17% were male students. How many, at Federal da Paraíba, how many uh, pedagogy students per each year? Each year we get um, three, um, no, para aí, 320, 360, 360. We get 120 per shift, morning, afternoon, evening. Um, okay, so presently, uh, male students are 14, 
percent of, of enrollments. I have a, a PhD student doing male graduates in pedagogy, which is very interesting, in, in preschool, the taboo. Its students present significant gaps in schooling, as I said. Um, and at this moment, uh, the, the call is for teacher preparation to align with the common core curriculum for basic education, the, the NCC, and the National Education, education Council is calling a revision of the 2006, 2006 pedagogy and national curriculum guidelines. Critics have denounced that the curriculum proposal on the way it's based on knowledge fragmentation. That's the same critique since the 70s. Knowledge fragmentation, instrumental competences, and evaluation of teachers fostering that um, identity crisis. We assume that curriculum reforms require studies on curricular development experiences based on the 2006 um, previous uh, reform in different higher education institutions and that empirical evidence can fill the debate about our social and educational challenges considering uh, regional and local aspects because we really lack research. So a little bit about the historical background. Uh, the, the program was created in 1939 as a three-year bachelor plus one-year licenciatura. Uh, which was basically uh, on didactics uh, subjects, because at that time the elementary school teachers were prepared in normal schools, which were high school level. So uh, there, there were critiques all over until 1962 when there was a reform, because uh, the, 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 the issue was that there were no opportunities in the labor market for graduates except in education bureaucracies. And plus the curriculum did not really prepare uh, specialists for, for the, the bureaucracy of planning. So in 1962, a uh, four year program was created with a nationally defined minimum curriculum, always that idea of the minimum curriculum, and uh, specialists and normal school teachers. Uh, they, they, uh, there was a possible for specialists and normal school teachers, basically, uh, but there was also a possibility of preparing elementary school teachers because the idea is that if you can teach the, the teachers in, in normal schools, you can also teach in elementary school. So in 1969, after the, the milita military coup, uh, there was a university reform. And so the, the, the pedagogy curriculum had to be uh, reformed again. And so uh, a single diploma, uh, Licenciatura was established, no more about a bachelor uh, diploma. And uh, there was a common basis with fundamentals of education and didactics and the technical qualifications that we call habilitações, preparing not only teachers for normal schools that never um, uh, worked in my university, it was never offered, but it prepared school administration, administrators, uh, school supervisions, which is like a curriculum development function in school and school counselors. I did counseling, orientation educacional. Marian, yeah. can I just ask? Um, so the, the, the historical program trained teachers for normal schools. Yeah. Were they yeah. teachers before they came to the program or did they come as young people and then? Uh, that's, well, I, I really cannot answer precisely because I lack the, the research uh, data, but that, that, that has always been um, a requisite, requisite that you have to be a teacher to, to uh, start pedagogy. Okay. But if teachers were, uh, they were prepared in normal schools, if they went to higher education, they probably, I, I believe all of them came from normal schools. Okay. So, Maybe they had some experience teaching. So, so the only people that came into the universities in the pedagogy program had to go to a high school, which was teaching 
normal school. Teaching. And we and we had a variety of uh, not only normal so schools. So you couldn't enter from an academic uh, high school. Probably not, because even uh, in the forties there was this link between the technical preparation. Usually you could not first you could not go into higher education, then you could go, but in the same track. So that's what happened. So normal school considered a teaching track. Yeah, teaching track. And they called also pedagogical courses at high school level. Then they had a variety of um, before distance education. It was distance education, a variety of um, modular programs. But, but people went to normal high schools, didn't teach. They just well, were students in high school. They had to do a practical. And see, I they uh, at, at, I think during many decades, uh, normalistas, the normal schools uh, graduates, they were the, the elementary teachers. Some, so it was it was also called uh, waiting for a husband course. <laughs> so a lot of middle class women went to normal schools not to teach, but most most. Uh, Teachers in, in, in elementary school came from normal schools. And, and, well, and, and, in, the, in the Northeast, many people didn't have a degree in, in thought. But. So in the 1960s, about what percentage of teachers in the Brazilian system, teachers, just had normal schools? In the elementary system? In, in the elementary school. Yeah. In I the 60s? 90%. 90%. So yeah. there's not, no university degrees. In, in the early, <laughs> for elementary school, mostly not. Yeah. But there was this since 1939, there was this higher education, you know, but That's, for instance. As I was saying, it's very, because only a small percentage of people actually went to. No primario, in, in primario, in elementary the professors yeah, were normal. Yeah, it was the basic See, but education was, reform in whatever it was, 95, 96. It was <laughs> the first time that they set minimum education requirements for elementary teachers. Before that, okay. there were teachers who hadn't even graduated from yeah. high school. No, and also so, so that might... means a very a very small. So what percentage of normal school students in this period in the 1960s actually went to university? Because you have to go to, to teach in secondary school, you have to have an university degree, is that true? In secondary, yes. yes. I, I I cannot give you a, a number because uh, what I know is that very few people went to higher education before the 1968 reform. There was you know, a movement. So that. even secondary school teachers only had normal school education. Yeah. Secondary <laughs> school teachers. Yeah. No, they <laughs> let me, let me, they had they either had a bachelor degree, for instance, in math with one oh. year of pedagogical oh. subjects. Oh. But so they had subjects. But there were lots of people who didn't have a teaching degree. I had teachers when I was in a public high school who were <laughs> students, high education students. For instance, a, a student going to, to, to medicine, he taught biology. A student going to physics, he taught physics. I had, I had teachers who were not. Um, yeah, if and, you allow me, even yeah. today we have this num a number of teachers that are teaching in a different subject than those that they were prepared for. Yeah. We are working on our research right now, uh, working on these numbers. And even today we have this reality. They are, uh, they have a licenciatura in literature in, yeah. and they are teaching like yeah. history. Well, it, it turns out uh, the sort of production function estimates that we've done, uh, mm -hmm. that it's better to get a math degree than to get a pedagogy degree if you're going to teach math in high school. The students do better than the person who specializes in math. In fact, I'm surprised that anybody with just a pedagogy degree would be able to teach math in high school. Uh, no, not in high school. Not today. Not today. No, no but never in high school. No. Uh, if you have a pedagogy degree since um, uh, 2006 or so, even before you go to elementary and preschool. To go to the second, uh, to go from fifth grade to eighth grade in high school, you have to have a bachelor plus, which plus licenciatura, 
which is one year of in, pedagogical. In the, in the subject that you're going to do. Yeah. Yes. But in the 80s, in, in, my, in my region, in the Northeast, we had lots of what we call lay teachers, teachers who had no preparation. So you were, you were, you, you went, you, you finished K-8. So you taught until fifth grade. Because, you know, it, we had lots of programs. We had this logos, which was a distance, but uh, with a printed so materials so to so prepare So beginning teachers. in the 90s, everybody had to get a university degree and then you had this explosion of distance, of distance education in order for people to get. Yeah, 1996 with the, the law, the yeah. new law, you had to have uh, a degree to teach. But then there was a 10 year period so that all teachers would get their higher education degree. We had a program in my university to, to receive uh, the teachers, who people who are teaching yeah. to get their higher education degree. And I don't know if nowadays we still have, because the, 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 the strange thing that I, you know, we, the law is still uh, uh, allows preparation at high school level. That's another research that would need to be done if, if there are normal schools preparing people who go into the, the system, you know, to teach. Yeah. I really, yes. I don't know because um, yes. there are, when there are so many pedagogy graduates. There is an inflation of, right. of diplomas. But the, the, the profession is devalued, so people might not go to, you know, it's improving. Now, in, in, for instance, in my, in, in, in my hometown, the municipal system is paying well. The students don't want the, the scholarship when they go into the master no. or the PhD. Of course, the scholarship is, is too, too low. So, can, can I just share one more comment about, yeah. about, about, about it? Uh, well, uh, I, in my point of view, the Brazilian context of the curriculum in pedagogy, letters, and so on, have a lot of problems, in my point of view. One problem that I consider is uh, to have a uh, that you said, you have some base of theoretical things and after you have a practicality of things or practices of things. In my point of view, if you want to uh, create that kind of curriculum in pedagogy, it is so important to, to understand the praxology, the praxis, and after you have a, a dialogue with some subject that you uh, develop, it is so important to do it. And another thing, that I consider so important. Um, I remember when I participated in some meeting in CAPES and uh, Education Ministry, uh, there, there was some uh, politics to help the teachers in this case to certificate them, you know that. But unfortunately now, don't have no more policies to help this teacher without certificate yet. In my point of view, it is important to your, your research is so important for us to understand what the curriculum was the problem, but you need to consider education so important is the base. Uh, and unfortunately, in our country now, uh, the education in elementary school, for example, not important. No, no. Uh, if you are artist, you can teach, or you know, I believe that if you have another concept of the, the education that consider that the elementary uh, school, the base, to be a citizen, to, to know the, your rights, of course, that you can modify this conception about the curriculum. You have to That's enter the career through public uh, examinations, uh, but they, they, they hire people under these uh, short-term contracts. So maybe in some municipalities, they can hire people who don't have a degree, yeah. but usually in in most, I think, at least in the capitals and big cities, that, that's not supposed yeah. to happen. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the practicum since the 90s, because of this praxis model, it, it is distributed all along the five years. So you, you start with the practicum you know, all along. So uh, we have the credit system uh, in the 70s. Um, 
And so the, the preparation could, could uh, go from three to seven years and, and teaching experience was required and still is. I don't know why, because if you are a 17 year old who wants to, to start a pedagogy uh, uh, program, you, how are you going to have teaching experience? Anyway. Uh, so the critique was, Again, fragmentation of preparation and technicism. And now it's neo-technicism, but in the 70s it was technicism. Um, so uh, they have this Marxist framework to say that uh, the, 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 the administrators and super, super, supervisors, they conceive and the teachers had to execute the, the, the tasks and anyway, which doesn't make sense, but so pedagogy went through intense discussion since the 70s. And since then, uh, UNFOPI, which is a national association that has a lead in this, uh, defended uh, that it had to become a teacher preparation program. So they, their thesis was teaching as the basis of the curriculum, and there is, there is a dispute. Uh, about this uh, uh, important name is uh, Libani uh, yeah. and, and his group, and we are. Uh, so, um, yeah. I think they're going to still so We're going to have to summarize the slides. Right? Oh, okay. All right. So let's see. So, 2006, we have this curricular reform, which established teaching for um, elementary and and um, preschool and okay I'll, I'll jump this again it was about reducing uh, and uh, now the critique was about reducing pedagogy to teaching so it's the, the other the other movement and now in uh, 2019 we have this new uh, can we go back to yeah. <laughs> no are you at some time to show us what the actual courses are? You mean the coursework? What are the courses that they take for the four the three year program or four year program? You mean now or, now? Or pedagogy for elementary school teaching. <clears throat> you mean the teacher preparation? You say it's 32. Pedagogy has four years. It's a four <clears throat> years course. Four years. So Today, nowadays, 800, 800 no, four to five. Four to five. Okay. Four so do, do you actually five, have nine, the coursework? Do you actually have the coursework? The names of the courses? I know all of them, but I, I don't have here in the slides. Oh. At some time, could you send me that? Sure. Sure. Big, yeah. And 300 course. hours of supervised internship means. Mm, of about uh, 30 hours a week, 10 weeks, or 15 hours of 20 weeks. So 20 weeks of supervised teaching. That's what this means, right? Yeah. 15 hours a week. It's not much, right? Well, A, does it really happen? B, <laughs> Uh, in what under what conditions? Who's supervising? And what does it mean to be supervised, or do they just go and take teach a course unsupervised? One of our or don't or just sit in a school without teaching. Do we have any data? Has anybody ever done a survey of students? We don't know, Carlo. We don't have research right now. This group uh, I'm with. I tell you right now. Yeah. That someone should actually go in Paraiba and see what those people are doing who become teachers because it isn't just a federal university, it's a small percentage. But all these other universities that are producing teachers, mostly private, and see what exactly it means to do an internship. That's what we are, we're trying to do. We're just starting and uh, you're gonna see how difficult it is to get the data when I when I proceed. But we have um, we have a subgroup who is doing internships specifically. So we are divided into into four subgroups. At, at, this group, this team. At, at the federal university. Yeah. That's I don't know how much. Percent, that's a tiny percentage. 
No, no, we, we want to do, okay, let me let me proceed. We, we want to do the whole state, private and, and public, you know, but uh, we have a subgroup who is going to look at specifically the internship. Okay. But we're just starting, we started this year, you know, Great. so, okay. Um, so now we have this 2019 new um, document, uh, the, the National Guidelines for Teacher Preparation, and, it, and it's going also under uh, attack because it reduces pedagogy to the preparation of, the, of teachers um, aligned to the NCC. And then the NCC is, is set to be a neo uh, uh model with, with competences. They hate the word competence, usually. And um, all my colleagues, most of them. Uh, professionals from the schools of education. They don't want to be vocational ed teachers. Uh, no, the, the, you know, I have, a, I have a Spanish colleague who once said something to a group which really made sense. They said, don't you critique uh, banking education? Competence is, is the other, uh, is, is the other, is the it alternative. Works. You know, it's about really corporifying um, knowledge. It's a, you know, it's not blah, blah, blah. It what? makes sense. You, you don't, you don't Could get you it. Translate? <laughs> it's not about, um, Ele é sobre corporificar o conhecimento. Cor, cor, somatizing knowledge, corporifying knowledge, appropriating uh, concretely. It's not about blah 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 blah. You know, because we we talk a lot. We we criticize very easily. You know, but you can say this, that, that, but do it. If you, you know, knowing how to do that's competence. Yeah, that's right. But what percentage of the, what, how much time in your university in the pedagogy course is spent on teaching how to teach the BNCC? There's a curriculum, right? Yeah. The, For elementary how schools, How to correct? teach, how to teach. Actually how to teach. It's the practical that happens every semester. No, no, I'm talking about coursework. Coursework, we have a, this, uh, a, a component about curriculum one, 60 hours. What's the rest of the curriculum? We're supposed to, it's supposed to, to uh, to be a philosophy of education, team. sociology of education, economics no, of education. Uh, Let me give you a quote from they... a Chilean teacher, a Chilean student teacher. There was a report on Chile in 2003, an interview with yeah. students. Here was the greatest quote of Polkan. He says, I know a lot, this secondary school, I know a lot about the theory yeah. in Spanish literature. And I know about, a lot about the theory of teaching, but I don't know how to teach Spanish it's, literature. It's the same, Carlo. It's, it's the same. The same. In my... completely unprepared. This it's is a the last same. year student. Completely it's the same. unprepared to go into a school and actually teach the curriculum in Spanish literature. When I, when I, I have the scientific initiation undergraduate students, when they are about to, to graduate, they, you know, they don't know how to prepare a class plan, they don't know how to prepare yeah. uh, a course plan, so who, you know. So who writes the curriculum? We. You do. Of course, we have the your, your pedagogical university. political uh, plan. So you're in charge of that curriculum? Not me. A no, group not you, but I'm just saying your faculty. Yes. Yeah. So why don't you change it? Sorry? So why don't you change it? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Carnoy, uh, I work 365 days a year, no vacation ever since I'm there. It's hard to Only negotiate. Yeah, days a, a, a year. <laughs> I work Christmas Day. You know, it's not easy to. It's a, a continuous struggle. So you, I don't know. May I intervene just 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 to structure this a little bit because we're, uh, we're running very slowly. Um, so, so as you've probably gathered, Carnoy and the Lemon Center are very deeply involved in trying to change teacher education. Yeah. So the questions that you're getting are about 
why don't you change in the ways that we think are the ways that it should change? And I think, so So that's, that's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. But then the second thing is, I think I at least would really like to move not through the history, but to the, the okay. work that you're doing so that we can so that we can talk about how you're trying to change this. Because this this is the, the history is all very interesting and it's important, right. but it's a poor use of our time here. Okay, so we are mapping uh, the programs in the state of Paraíba in order to compare the curricular plans. And uh, so we like right now what we what we did about this is to access the plan. So in the in the public universities you can access the plan in the in the website. In the private universities you can't. We got only one plan uh, because we have a, st a master's student who works in one of these private universities. But then we went to the website and the website, uh, the law, the 1996 law uh, says that they have to, pu to publicize uh, at least the, the profile of graduates and the, um, the subjects of the, how do you call that? The grad curricular, matriz curricular. Uh, um, the whole the, 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 matrix of the, the, the plan of studies, yeah. yeah. And so uh, we don't get that either. Some for some we get. So we we started with twenty five um, programs, ten public and fifteen private. And the 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 idea was only to to include those who are in the state because I, I'll show you a few numbers here. Um, because um, private high education institutions comprise 88% of the offer and distance education 73%. And we have universities like um, Uninte with 22,000 offers, but that's for the whole country. And even one that offers 73,206 places for pedagogia in the country, so they're offered in my state. So uh, right now, okay, I'll, I'll just be brief. Um, we, we found out that uh, they don't obey the law, uh, publicizing the, their plan, so that makes this a little difficult uh, to do the documentary analysis. But uh, we also found out that they copy each other's language even the public universities, they, because for, for instance, my university had three programs in different campus. And um, one copy copied the, the previous, and then the third copied a little bit from both uh, you know, previous programs. And even the, the private universities, they also, they use a marketing language. They have interactive sites. You, you, you get them and they are popping, you know, do you need more information? They have a WhatsApp and they, they are saying how much you pay a month, et cetera. And they are, the, that they are uh, the best, innovative, et cetera. And they copy each other. And I wonder if they copied from a Nova Scola magazine uh, saying what pedagogy was, because it's exactly the same language. I have the quote here. So what we are doing to change, we created a network called uh, HEPPEL. I don't know if it's written there. And uh, we're having a seminar next year in April in my university. Uh, this this um, uh, network is a, a, an alternative voice to Anthropy because Anthropy is already uh, criticizing the, 19, uh, the 2019 reform, but we are having everything. one just for <laughs> pedagogy. This is for teacher preparation in general. In this 19, uh, 2019 uh, BNC uh, document, I, I, I myself found it interesting. They, they are proposing um, a program just for preschool and another for elementary teachers. And they leave it kind of open what's going to happen with uh, pedagogia, but they open the possibility of preparing the specialists 
um, at undergraduate level and also because we never had at postgraduate level like a master PhD. There are specialization programs for school administrators, supervisors, but that's all we have so far. So, so you have a question. Just a clarification. Yeah. Uh, when you say specialist, do you mean if that's referring to like guidance counselors? Um, like, it, I guess, what do you mean when you say specialist? Because they're not the teachers, right? So I was just right. wondering what. It's, yeah, like, they each, according to um, this document, planners mm -hmm. and the previous administrators, supervisors, curriculum super, supervisors, and uh, counselors, okay. plus inspectors, which never mm -hmm. happened. I, you know, I never found a pedagogy uh, program that prepared inspectors. Mm -hmm. But an inspector, I imagine, would be someone who would do evaluation, the, the, the macro evaluation. So that's it, then I'll, I'll close. Uh, and th there are documents from Anfopi. There is also a document from this network I belong to, and uh, together with Andipi, which is a, a national association for uh, didactics and, and teaching. Uh, 